Communications Decency Act gets into the Senate version. And then in conference, they basically put both the Senate and House versions, Section 230 and the Communications Decency Act, into the final Telecom Act and again, very little coverage. The little coverage that was given to the issue was about the decency part because civil liberties groups were very concerned about it. Uh, the day that President Clinton signed it into law in 96, there was a legal challenge by civil liberties groups and the Supreme Court would then repeal the Communications Decency Act part of it. So all you have left is Section 230. Um, and from there, it's still, nobody quite knew. Yeah. Yeah, so the way that courts have interpreted that, uh, to say that you can't treat an interactive computer service as the publisher or speaker has been pretty broad. And I will mention, because there's been a little confusion, there are a few exceptions in Section 230. Uh, the two most notable ones are for federal criminal law and for intellectual property law. So one myth that comes, uh, comes out a lot recently is that Section 230 allows piracy. Um, that's just not true. There are, there are concerns about the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which has a safe harbor program, but Section 230 has always had an intellectual property exception and federal criminal law. But what the courts have basically said, they've had a fairly broad reading. So if, uh, if a platform is sued for defamatory con comments that its users post, even if the platform has gotten a notice about it or has reason to know, there's, they're going to be immune under Section 230. There's been some abrogation, which I go into in the book, um, and the, the courts have been not the clearest as to when the platform actually contributes to the content. They've had something called a material contribution test, um, and we could talk later about some of these cases. But uh, overall, it's been a fairly broad reading of the immunity, and that's um, the cases, I would say, the cases always have been difficult. There have been some really tough cases where people have had very awful things happen to them uh, and for whatever reason they can't or they don't sue the person who posted the content and then Section 230 prevents them from suing the actual platform. So, um, so that's where some of the source of the criticism has been. I would say the other source of the criticism, which has been more recent, has been that the platforms are moderating too much. So we have one side saying they're not moderating enough, they're not blocking harmful content,